Today you'll learn how to remove objects in Photoshop with ease even when you're working with complex photos. This technique is one that can work as a standalone method but can be enhanced with the help of other object removal tools as you'll learn later in the lesson. Now we're going to cover a lot in this video so if you want to make sure that all these techniques stick be sure to download the free lesson cheat sheet for this video available in the description below. Now in this example we're going to remove this car from the background some of the cars down the street, and then we're gonna to touch things up with a few additional tools to finalize the result. Now, typically with object removal tools, something as large as this car would be extremely, extremely difficult to remove because we don't have enough sample areas to rebuild what was behind this car. But now with generative fill, we can easily create new pixels within this photo to replace whatever was behind this car, or at least make it look like we have replaced it. So the first thing we need to do in this process is select the lasso tool. To select the lasso tool, just press L on your keyboard, or you can find it right here inside of the toolbar. The reason I'm choosing the lasso tool is because it's really easy to create a general selection around the object that you're trying to replace with generative fill. From there, we have a couple important settings up in the options bar. I'll set the feather to 10 pixels and then make sure that anti-aliased is checked. Now we can go and create a selection around the object that we want to remove, which in this case is the car. So I'll go and click and drag around the entire car just outside of the edge, and that also includes this bumper that is between this gentleman's legs here. So I'm gonna go all the way around like so, just around the outside edges of the car, giving enough breathing room so Photoshop can figure out what actually needs to fill in this selection area. With this active selection, we can just go and click on Generative Fill inside of the Contextual Taskbar. If you don't see this, just go up to Window, and then down here to the Contextual Taskbar to to reveal it. So going ahead and clicking on generative fill, we'll then go and click generate without any specific prompt added. Photoshop will take a minute to load the results and then it will give us three variations here inside of the properties panel that we can click between to see which option we like the best. Now this one looks pretty decent, but the post is in a weird area. So I don't really like how that turned out. I don't like the way this curb is looking here either. So we're actually going to regenerate a few different results for us because all three of these didn't really work out in our favor. So again, I'll go ahead and click on generate to create a new set of options for us to choose from. Now, as you can see, we have a new row of variations that we can click between to choose something that we like. In this case, this example actually looks pretty good to me, or even this one here is pretty acceptable as well. I think I'm gonna opt for this particular one instead. I think it looks the most seamless overall rather than having to regenerate something else for the sake of example. So now all of those adjustments were applied onto a new generative fill layer that if I turn this on and off, you can see the before and after. So what has happened here is that it rebuilt our subject's pants that I don't really like, but we'll touch this up in just a moment but most importantly, it did a great job to fill in all of this detail that was once behind the car. This would be nearly impossible to replicate with any of the previous object removal tools in Photoshop, like the clone stamp tool or the remove tool, for example. This is like taking things to a totally new level. Now, before we go and touch up the problem areas, I'm also going to go and remove these cars from the background. So once again, still with the lasso tool selected, I'll just click and drag around those cars in the background that I want to remove with the same settings as before. So that 10 pixel feather anti-alias is checked. Once again, I'll click on generative fill in the contextual taskbar, then click on generate while that selection is active and Photoshop will take a minute to load and then fill in that active selection area with something new. Now with that complete, we can click between our variations until we have something that we're happy with. In this case, the second variation looks best to me. So I'm going to select that one here. And again, it's on its own generative fill layer. So now with this complete, we have to go through and touch up any other smaller areas that we would like to remove as well as fix any problems that we have created within our generative fill layers, such as the top of our subject's leg, for example. Before we get to touching up the leg, we're going to go and remove some of the people in the background of this photo just to make it totally clean. But because these are relatively small areas of the photo, rather than having to use all the computing power and slow down your computer for generative fill, we can just use something like the remove tool to touch this up. Clicking on the new layer icon to create a new layer at the top of our layer stack, 
I'll call this layer to remove tool. I'll now go ahead and select the remove tool from the toolbar here, and then make sure that sample all layers is enabled. From there, I can just go and paint over the subject that I would like to remove or the person in the background. And then because I have remove after each brush stroke unchecked, I'm going to go and paint over the next person I want to remove from the background as well. With those two pink highlights added, I'll press enter. And now Photoshop will remove those from my photo super easily. If you want to learn more about the remove tool specifically, you could check out this video right here where I dive deep into how to use that tool. So now the final thing we have to do is touch up our subject's leg because if I zoom in here, you can see how he kind of has like this bent thigh, looks like he has a broken leg or something. So what we need to do is create a selection of the original leg to restore it. And then we need to touch up the outer edges once again. It sounds a bit complicated, but I promise you it's super easy. So holding alt or option, I'll click on the eyeball icon beside my image layer so that now I'm only viewing that layer. With that particular image layer selected, I'm gonna go and select the object selection tool up here in the toolbar. With the mode set to lasso, I'm going to click and drag around the area that I want to restore, which is my subject's leg. So I'll just click and drag just around the outside edges of that leg like so, and then it will snap to the edge of that object. Now with this selection active, I'm going to re-enable all of my previous layers by clicking and dragging through the eyeball icons to make them visible once again. Now to restore the contents of this selection area, we need to remove it from from our generative fill layer that is causing this problem. So clicking on the generative fill layer that is the one that is removing that car and creating the issue with the leg, I'll click on that layer mask while I have this active selection. I'll then grab my brush tool by pressing B and set my foreground color to black. Now with that generative fill layer mask selected, I can just go and paint inside of this selection area and it's going to restore that leg for me. Now, of course, I still have some areas outside of the selection that are showing through from this generative fill layer. So what we're going to do is invert this selection and then mask out these additional problem areas. So within the contextual taskbar, we can just click on the invert selection option. And now we're selecting everything outside of our subject's leg. And with that generative fill layer mask still selected, Selected, my foreground color still set to black, I can now go and just mask out any of those other problem areas around my subject's leg. Now it is going to reveal the car back into view because that is what was being removed with the generative fill layer, but we can easily go and refine this using a couple of different tools. So now with this complete, I'm going to leave this selection active and then touch up the outside edge of this leg using the remove tool. So once again, going to the remove tool layer, I'm going to select the remove tool by pressing J. And then with the sample all layers enabled, remove after each brush stroke disabled, I'll click and drag over this part of the car like so, and I'll only be able to select outside of the edge of my subject's leg because of this active selection. I'll press enter to commit to those changes and Photoshop will automatically remove that for me. Now for this remaining area between my subject's legs, I'll press command or control D to deselect this and we'll just just use another generative fill layer to make our life nice and easy. With the lasso tool selected by pressing L, I'll just create a much smaller and specific selection area around my subject's leg so that Photoshop has an easier time to only remove the things that we don't want and it won't really mess up the edges of his pants that we do want to maintain. So with this selection active, we'll click on generative fill just like before. We'll then click on generate with no specific prompt added to that generative fill adjustment. Once again, we have a few different variations that we can choose between, but the first one seems to be my favorite. So I'll just click on that variation to enable it. Now zooming out, you can see that we have successfully removed the car from the photo, the cars in the background, the people from the sidewalk, and we have maintained the look of our subject. So looking at our before and after, it's pretty crazy how much we were able to remove with relatively little effort, all because of the help of generative fill. This is by far one of my favorite new object removal adjustment options, and it is something that you should definitely use when you're trying to remove larger things from your images. Now again, if you wanna download the free PDF lesson cheat sheet for this video, just click the link in the description below, type in your name and email, I'll click the button and you'll instantly receive a nice new PDF guide in your inbox. You'll also be added to the list of people waiting for all my future PDF guides. So you only have to do this process once and then you're good to go. But now if you're looking for ways to take your object removal 
school skills in Photoshop even further, be sure to check out this next video here covering the best tools for object removal in Photoshop. It's a great way to continue to expand on the object removal skills you learned here, and I hope to see you there next.